Hello everyone, this is just a quick overclocking and benchmarking video of my MSI GTX 1080 Aero card with the EVGA GTX 980 Ti Hybrid Kit installed. I want to first apologize as I did not film the installation of the Hybrid Kit, but this is a very expensive video card that is pretty brand new and hard to get a hold of, and I wanted to focus on the actual installation of the hybrid kit and not on videography or making sure the lighting was right and, and all of that. However, if you guys want, I can post pictures of the video card. I can pull it out of the case, open it up and, and post some pictures later if you'd like. Maybe even get some video of what it looks like and, and post that on YouTube. Just let me know if that's something you'd like to see in the comments below. So without further ado, let me show you what I have. I purchased the MSI Aero card. This is a reference blower style card. And the reason I purchased this is that's what the hybrid kit is designed to go into, a reference blower style card of the 980. It fits perfectly onto the 1080. Um, there, there was no issues except for one small faceplate issue that I'll go into. This is not $789. The prices you see here listed on Amazon are not correct. These are resellers that have purchased the card and are reselling them for an exorbitant fee. This card costs $639. I believe the EVGA one is $619. So these are much cheaper than what you see on the on the Amazon right now. Just wait a, uh, a month or so and the actual manufacturers will have them all back up in stock at actual MSRP. The hybrid kit that I purchased was this one. Now this has gone up by $10. I purchased this a week ago for $49.99. I don't know if it was on super sale. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not sure if other people had the same idea that I have and it's gone up by $10, but this is what I purchased. I purchased for $49.99. Now on here you'll see the faceplate. The unique part about this faceplate, besides the fact that it doesn't fit on the current generation card, is these holes right here. These holes allow the tubes to pass through nicely on the card. They don't actually have it, a picture of what it looks like on the card. But it allows the tubes to come out uh, on the top of the card nicely. Now, as this faceplate does not fit, what I did was I went to the faceplate of the MSI, and right here, this area, right, this notch right here, which actually MSI has a hybrid card they're coming out with. I believe it's $799 MSRP. So what I've purchased here, first of all, saved $100 to do so. Um, but I just uh, used a Dremel and cut this out of the faceplate and allowed the tubes to come through. I also, while I was in there, since the way the, uh, the blower style reference card works is it's a very large heat sink with fins that sits on top of the processor itself as well as the plate that sits on top of the VRAM. Now, without those heat, that heat sink over the VRAM, I was just worried. So I went ahead and purchased these and strategically placed these. They, they're self-stick. They, they're very good, actually. And strategically place those on the actual plate so as the air goes over it's just drawing out a little more heat for the VRAM itself. I don't have a way of measuring the VRAM temperature but some of the other reviewers that have used it on uh, the Raspberry Pi or other VRAM chips have noted anywhere between a 5 and a 10 degrees Celsius decrease in temperature. So I figured for $20 I might as well, while I had the card open, might as well get those on there. Also, it comes with a fan, which is just fine, except for that's a 120 millimeter fan, and my rear exhaust, where the only place I could put this, is a 140 millimeter Noctua fan that I purchased, and I wanted to use that. So I actually, this is the fan I own. I own this fan right here. I, I like the black colors instead of the poop brown that they offer. So I purchased this one uh, a while ago when I, when I you know, made my case. But in order to make that work, I had to buy this little adapter. This side that you're looking at right here, this side goes on the radiator, and the opposite side, that side, is what connects to the fan. It works just fine. I had no issues uh, installing it. It went on easy peasy, and for $7, I gotta say, I I'm very pleased. That allows me to still use this knock to a fan as my rear exhaust. Furthermore, I did not connect the fan. As you'll see here, this is this fan cable connects to the pump, and it controls the fan. Well, I didn't do that. I have my fan connected to my motherboard so that my motherboard can control the airflow 
since it is an exhaust fan as well. Now I do have it set to a minimum of 1000 RPM so that it's constantly getting a very good airflow. But as you'll see, my temperatures are very, very low. So that is what we're currently using right now. Now, what I have here on my overclock settings, I have my power limit to the maximum, uh, 115 and linked to the power limit. I have my core clock set to plus 185 and my memory clock set to plus 500. I also have a custom fan profile simply because I don't like the fan profile that's sitting uh, on the, the default. Uh, here you can see my custom fan profile right, right here. I do have the uh, Deep Silence 6 case, so it is sound deadened quite a bit. So I could have the fan at 100% and not, not hear it at all. Your mileage may vary depending on your case, but this is how I have mine set up right now. So, uh, Unigene Heaven. This is, seems to be a pretty standard uh, benchmarking besides the uh, PC mark, the 3D PC mark. This is a pretty good one I'm going to show. I'm running it at 1920 by 1080 simply because when you run it at 4K, the frame rate is, is pretty low. Uh, even with this card, at the extreme settings, this thing pushes a graphics card. I believe I was getting about 30 to 40 frames per second and just didn't make for a very good video. So I have changed my TV from a 4K resolution back down to a 1920 by 1080 so I could run this and have a hopefully a pretty clean video for you guys. The settings are ultra quality. Um, sorry, that is my wife uh, texting me. You keep hearing she's leaving work right now. Um, it is a extreme tessellation and my anti-aliasing is at times eight. I don't know what people usually run uh, for benchmarking tests, but you can of course test it yourself and see what you're getting. So I'll go ahead and start this right now. So I don't know what the good frame rates are supposed to be with these settings. I haven't looked too much. I just wanted to show the actual overclocking abilities here. I saved about $100 by doing this myself. The downside is since I did purchase an MSI card, my warranty is voided. So that's a give and take. Again, I believe, and you can contact on the EVGA forums because they are very good at responding to people and ask them, but I believe their warranty allows for modifications. I think if you cut the faceplate though, you, you, they might they might not take that back. That might not, that still might not work under warranty. Um, but as you can see here, I am running at a 2113 megahertz overclock. My memory is overclocked to 5505 and that is times two in this card and I'm currently sitting at what 38 degrees C with this so I'm gonna let this run uh, let me go ahead and I should have pressed the benchmark already I'm sorry about that so I'm gonna go ahead and let the benchmark run here and this will take a few minutes you can fast forward to the end of the video if you'd like to but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let this run for a couple minutes
Now I will note that I was able to push this to 2146 I believe, but I got a couple graphical glitches that I didn't like so I brought it back down. And before anyone on the comments say, I fully understand this is up to the silicon lottery of these particular Pascal chips. Not everyone is going to get 21 megahertz out of their card. Matter of fact, I believe the average is about 2050. I just want to show what is capable that you don't necessarily have to buy the $800 card, uh, the hydro card that they're coming up with in order to get that. So here comes the benchmark score. And what do we get? I have no idea. So there, there it is. You can see all the settings right here. It was Tessellation Extreme, Quality Ultra, uh, eight times anti-aliasing on full screen. I think that's a, seems like a pretty good score. I don't really know. Um, and I'm not gonna save that. Go ahead and quit. And uh, as always, well, as always, we only have one other video up right now, but uh, like this if, if, if you know, you like what you see, um, always subscribe if you can. I'd appreciate that. But uh, here you go. You'll see that my GPU usage was, you know, pretty much maxed out. Obviously, there's scenes between the scenes that it doesn't. Um, my core clock was sitting at 21.14 max. I don't know the the difference, why it reads that. And my temperature was at a max of 43. Um, there you go. So have